you very much indeed. Very kind welcome. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, it's, uh, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the first keynote lecture uh, for the all-party group on inclusive growth. Uh, and I want to start by just saying a, a very heartfelt thanks to uh, the sponsors of this evening's event, the City of London Corporation, British Telecom, the Resolution Foundation, and the Prince of Wales Corporate Leaders Group. Uh, we would not be here tonight without them. Now, we've come together tonight to talk about a problem that troubles good people everywhere. Our marketplace has become too unstable, too unsustainable, and much too unequal. And I know that this will surprise you after perhaps some of the debates that we've had over the last couple of days. Uh, but, you know, the truth is that good people in politics, in <coughs> business, in unions, in finance, in civil societies, uh, and in churches, want to work together to figure out how we reconnect wealth, creation, and social justice. Uh, now, with a name like Liam Byrne, you, you might guess that there is um, a little Irish blood in my veins, uh, and you'd be right. My grandfather came to this country from Ireland in the 1930s. And his, his favourite joke was about uh, a Catholic priest uh, and an Anglican vicar uh, who were involved in a head-on collision out in a country lane one evening. And stumbling out of their cars, they stumbled into an embrace, and the Catholic priest says to the father, Father, I'm so sorry, you know, are you okay? And the vicar says, yes, I'm fine, I'm, I'm just a little bit shaken. And quick as a flash, the priest whips out his hip flask and offers it to the vicar, who drinks down the fire water gratefully, wipes his lips and says, thank you ever so much. Uh, I suppose we should now call the police, but um, what do you think we should say to them? <laughs> At which point, the Catholic priest says, well, I don't know what you're going to say to them, but I'm going to say I wasn't the one who was drinking. <laughs> and I know that in the media sometimes it looks like you know all of us are trying to get one over each other and that's especially true in an election season but actually what we show tonight is the appetite to work together across parties and across public life because this question is simply too important for divide and rule it's not a game it's very very serious now in the book on rock and sand rock or sand the archbishop reminds us of the parable of jesus in the vineyard and the simple truth that the market is not some kind of celestial creation. It's not some kind of celestial design. It's a human design. And the problem is today that its human flaws are getting bigger and bigger. It's creating inequalities on such a scale that it is beginning to drive us apart rather than bring us together. We now live in a country where, here in London, corporate bank accounts are full. But in my constituency in Birmingham, children will go to bed this evening with their stomachs empty. Our message tonight, though, is one of hope. Because we made the market, we believe that we can change it. We can make it better. We can make it possible for all to flourish, but only if we work together. And so what we've tried to do tonight is bring together some of the best thinkers and some of the best think tanks to tell us how change could happen. So in the pamphlets that we're distributing tonight, the Oxford Martin School tell us how inequality is now seen by many uh, in the IMF and elsewhere as a threat to growth. On the demand side, Policy Network explain how trade and infrastructure like airports and better immigration policy can boost bigger markets into which we sell. On the supply side, Policy Exchange have new thoughts about how we harness the power of science and technology, safe in the knowledge that innovation is probably the best way out of austerity. Centre Forum have got uh, new ideas on how we inject patients into our capital markets. And the Social Market Foundation have great ideas for strengthening our labour market, reminding us that unless we grow smarter, we will grow poorer. Together, these are ideas for how we build a bigger market, a more productive economy, and a fairer share of our shared success, where working people are no longer simply workers on tap, I think that these are ideas that can spark debate and above all change because ultimately the purpose of the all-party group on inclusive growth is to make change happen. We reject the idea that good people should just stand around and let it be. We're here because we believe that we have a personal responsibility to leave things in a better shape than we found them, to build an opportunity economy not just for some but for all. 
we believe that we should practice what we preach. We all know that living a good life is much harder than thinking about it. We remember St. Augustine's prayer, God make me good, but not yet. Well, we're here tonight because we think change is overdue. It's time to crack on. It's time for the debate to advance. And there is nobody better to get us started in this debate than His Grace, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Please join me in welcoming him to the Rostrum.